Good morning, uh, I'm Roger Olivella for the CRG UPF Proteomics Unit and I'm going to present this, uh, this QCloud which is a, a, a tool that is web, a web-based quality control system for proteomics community. So you guys are um, used, very used to, um, to work with these uh, QC tools like the FastQC, the, the MultiQC, but in the proteomics community, maybe we are not as, it's not as common as in, in, in genomics community to, uh, to use this kind of uh, procedures in our workflows, of this kind of, of quality control procedures in our workflows. So for, um, for a redress this situation, we created a tool to uh, analyze uh, the sample data coming from mass spectrometers and control and assure the quality of the acquisition. So uh, just to remind you what a mass spectrometer is, is like a pair of scales that weigh proteins. So we are interested in the, the mass, in reality the mass to charge of proteins in order to identify them, them and quantify them from within a sample. So for that we created uh, this, the QCloud. So the idea is that it's very simple from the point of view of the mass spectrometer operator. So the mass spectrometer only have to uh, inject some uh, specific uh, quality control samples, which is we labeled as QC1, which is a low complexity sample, QC2, uh, uh, um, a um, more complex uh, sample and QC3, which is also a, a more complex, but with some specific peptides. Uh, we created a, a small thing uh, client that is called the QCrawler, and this program sends the data acquired from these QC files to our servers here at the CRG. And here we convert this data to uh, MZML, which is a, a kind of um, an open format for proteomics data. We analyze this data with OpenMS, with open mass spectrometry software that allow us to extract all the uh, quality control data from the file. So we get some, uh, some set of files, uh, um, for example, the QCML. And with these files, we inject the data into MySQL uh, database and we show this information on a website, okay, uh, more or less is, is similar than, uh, than MultiQC. And so the user uh, only have to inject the data and after, depending on if uh, he or she injected a QC1, a QC2, a QC3, he will see in 20, maybe 30, 40 minutes, uh, it's his data or his data in, in the website. So, I did this, this pipeline with, with a Java and Vaja script and the, the interface, the website interface with HTML, CSS, jQuery and Google charts. But what happened is that we, uh, the number of users in increased a lot, so this pipeline was obsolete, so it was not very scalable. Maybe the battery. <laughs> So we noticed that it is not very scalable. It has a low running time, but it's still quite robust. But we decided to move to Nextflow in order to redress these problems. So we are currently working on this, uh, this new pipeline. So the idea is the, the, um, the transferring system to our server, it, our servers is more or less the same. We change it. We wrap it, all the proteomics workflows uh, within Nextflow, which is uh, Luca is going to explain in some minutes. And we uh, store the, the proteomics QC data in JSON files. We send them to the uh, MySQL database with a RESTful API. And we show this information in a new website that is uh, nicely uh, refactoring uh, Danny with a Spring Boot, Evernate, Angular 7, and Plotly.js. So we moved from Google Charts to Plotly.js. 
so I'm going to explain briefly this, this part, this, this, I'm going to zoom in here, which is the, the proteomics workflow, and Luca will explain you all the, the next flow part. So uh, we, we are here. So in order to um, compute these QC proteomics parameters, we use this software called NIME, which is in itself also a pipeline software. So it's a pipeline of a pipeline. Why we use this software? Because uh, we had these nodes that are from developed uh, at the OpenMS community, and it's very straightforward to, to install them in, in the software and to do the, the, the proteomics calculations of the quasi parameters. So here are the, the input files. We, we do some magic here and we obtain uh, these QC uh, files. We extract the parameters. For example, here is, we are extracting, uh, I think that is this, this is a, like a control vocabulary code in order to, um, to identify the different QC parameters. I think that this is a pep peptide spectral matches. So we extract with, with modules the uh, you see data and we store this information, this value is a number, in a JSON file. So with the checksum, the, the ontology, the control vocabulary, and the value of, of this quality control parameter. We store it in a JSON file. Okay. So this is one example. So in reality what we are doing is so we first um, we first apply uh, a different workflow depending on the instrument and the sample type. And we then calculate all the QC parameters. We store, it, we store them in a set of JSON files. And with another module built also in NIME, we send them uh, through a rest, RESTful API to, to the server. So Luca, if you want to explain the next flopper. Uh, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, Good morning. Uh, my name is Luca, and uh, the information from Bank of Money Core, and we are collaborating with this migration. So it may look like a bit like this, but I just said a baby so the microphone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but it's, it's really working or not? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah? working. And for the camera. Ah, for the camera, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just for the camera. Ah, for the camera, yeah, yeah. This? Yeah. This. So you may, you may ask why we decided to move to next floor, uh, a part of why we know, Cla we know Paolo and, uh, and then their uh, group. But uh, since we are already using NIME, that is a tool that allows you to make uh, this kind of pipeline. Well, first of all, because this uh, pipeline is quite complex and we have a huge problem with um, naming files. Okay? This is something that next floor, you know, takes care and you, you should really um, not worry about it. And the rest, because we would like to move this to a cloud level. So uh, it's, the name is Next Cloud, uh, uh, but uh, Cloud, but we, we are still in, in, in our cluster. So we want to move uh, fast and to, to be scalable and reproducible. This is another thing that we would like to really to, to achieve. So for doing this, we, uh, we decided to translate everything that is possible in, in, in Next Flow. Uh, so how it works. Uh, currently we receive a number of uh, files from uh, via FTP by different centers uh, around the world. Uh, they are zipped and we launch them in the pipeline. So uh, one of the things we are using from directly from Nextflow that is quite useful, I don't know how many people is using it, is this function that is called WatchPath. So WatchPath allows you to make your Nextflow like a sort of daemon that stays uh, in the background and s wait for the arrival of, of, of files. And once the file arrives, it triggers the execution of the pipeline. So in this way, you can create a pipeline that it stays there. And just receiving the, the file triggers the pipeline, and you obtain the results at the end. Of course, when you use this function, you have to um, take care about some strange behavior when you um, use this channel, because this channel is never closed. So if you want to mix this channel with other channel, you should take care about this. So some. Um, mix or join function are, are not working like you, you, you would expect. Another problem we had with this is that in, in this world of the uh, proteomics, uh, several things are only in Windows and are with 
proprietary format. So this, for us, that we come from genomics, where mostly is everything Linux, this can be uh, problematic. So uh, for instance, the first step, the real first step, is a conversion from a proprietary format to an open format. And this can be done only in a Windows server with a, a particular program. So in order to do everything in, in Nextflow, we uh, found a, a, a solution that was quite useful. I don't know, maybe it can be useful also for you if you have one day uh, <coughs> this problem, to use one server in Windows and to create a web server with a web service. And basically, you call this web service via URL or wget like a normal uh, program execution. Of course, this is a bottleneck because it is not scalable, OK? And, and the, the server has to be put somewhere and has to be accessible. We are um, expecting soon, we are waiting for, for, for this MS convert to become a Linux uh, program. And apparently, it's going to be this year, or maybe next year. And <laughs> since this is uh, it's finished. But for, with this, now we, 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 we managed to, to, to pass this step. So we receive the file. We convert it via uh, this web service. And then we enter in, 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 in the proper uh, part that is completely uh, reproducible, because it's, everything is in, in Docker container or in Similarity container. They can be converted. And, and uh, we wrap every single process that is done by using this NIME uh, in, a, in, an explore, in an explore process. So the rest is something that you, you may, you, you, you could have expected from every kind of uh, pipeline. Of course, depending on the kind of QC we receive that is in the name of the file, we can decide which route of the pipeline for, to follow. Some, some are, are, are it's quite, one is quite complex. So you may have a sort of multiplication of, 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 uh, of the pipeline. Uh, the other one are quite, are quite simple. A good thing is that every step gives you a JSON file. And those JSON files then are collected by another process, and they are uh, sent to, to the database uh, for, the, for, the final, uh, um, for the final, yeah, for, for the final display and, and, and for the storage. Mm -hmm. Another good thing is that uh, an, another problem that we face, and we are still working for, uh, for finding a solution, is that, as you can imagine, with the arrival of new files, you start to have an accumulation of, of temporary files. And this is quite you know, problematic. So we're thinking how to solve this, because there is not any built solution for this. We, uh, use, we took advantage of another function in, in, uh, in, uh, in Xflow, that is the store dir function. This allows you to keep a number of things that you really need for the rest of the pipeline uh, in a separate part. So what you can do is to use a cron job that delete things that are older than five days, for instance. So you can get rid of temp really temporary files and you, you don't fill your, your storage. And things that are always used, like for instance, the, the, the BlastDB that are generated by a FASTA file, they are stored in a separate part. We, we tried, and it worked. Of course, I can imagine that with a more complex pipeline, this is not a really a good solution. But we, we may push a lot, Paolo, for having a better solution. <laughs> Another thing that is, that is quite useful is that not every process works. OK, so uh, with other pipeline, you have to really mm, trigger, the, to try to, to tune this, and to try to see if this fails, go on. With, with Nextflow, it's very, very simple. You just put in the configuration file, error strategy, ignore, and goes through without any problem. And um, we have also uh, an information of this uh, thanks to the log that is generated. So uh, which are the future steps of this, of this pipeline? Well, first of all, uh, a better communication between the, the pipeline and the database, because many of the configurations are stored in a file, and we would like to put them in the database so that every kind of modification done in the database is reflected from in, in, within the pipeline. And, uh, and in particular, the process identifiers, because there is an ontology among them that is more or less uh, widely accepted among their community. And uh, when the failure is detected, we would like that the process send a, a signal. And I think there is a group of people here that is working on it. No? Then w when the process is finished or there is a problem, you, 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 you call a HTTP server to communicate that there is a, a, a problem. And you can see this live. Um, then we would like to store the process ontology within the B, as I said before, and create a smarter system for cleaning the work directory. As I was saying, that this can be quite problematic when you receive so much data and so big files. And uh, we'll, 
we will soon store the Docker image and the Singularity image in Docker Hub or in Singularity Hub because uh, I think this is uh, the best way to, to, to make this pipeline really um, portable. The only problem we have is this with uh, Windows Server that we don't know really how to, maybe we should make a description how to install somewhere. And when the Windows version will be expired and we will have the, the, the Linux one, maybe this will be even uh, faster. That's it. So if you have questions.